an interesting situation. Hello. I started making a coat for this video, and then the file got corrupted. So, some of this is already done. <laughs> but luckily, not enough of it was already done that I had to scrap the video. So, I'm going to show you what I did, and explain what needs to be done still, in the new intro to making one of my dream military jackets. Now, this is another one of those pieces that I have that's inspired by Trip NYC jackets. So, I'll put a couple of the listings here. I wanted to make something like this, but then, you know, go way over the top. Because <laughs> my favorite, like, I really like mixing military with things, because, like, I really like militia-looking shit. So that's what we're doing. We're making basically a militia punk jacket, and I'll add patches to it eventually. But it's a very simple design. Let me just... There. That's the design. I'm gonna hold it for a little bit so you can see it, hopefully. Basically, here's what we're doing. I'm gonna swoosh the bangs now that I've had to look. I'm. By the way, I'm considering, I want, the original design for the makeup that I do is to have the bags go to here and have them completely full so I can't see. So I bought a wig piece and I'm considering putting it on. Uh, you can dye it so it'll look like my hair, but I'm also afraid to do it. So there might be a video of the future when I make another video, which will be me wearing a wig piece. So get ready for the weird, so that might be. So basically... The first thing that I'm doing is I had to, the first thing that I did is I ripped all of the buttons off the original jacket because it was originally just sort of like a cotton raincoat um, so it had like buttons, like normal buttons on like a normal jacket but this is not a normal jacket anymore. So I'm going to hold up the jacket and then I'll show you, you'll see basically what I did. So, this is the jacket as it stands so far. I basically replaced them with these little closure clasps, the horseshoe closure clasps, um, which will be then covered by straps that, ow, <laughs> fucking stab myself with this damn thing, with closures that look like that, basically. It goes across and ends up with a frog closure, which is one of these, at the end on this side. And it goes all the way down. On top of that, so basically that's what all these pins are, because I put it on and then marked it with pins where I wanted them to be, and then I basically are just going to straighten them out. I also took off the fake pockets. I'm probably going to have to also take off the real pockets, um, because they are where I need closures to be. And then, as you probably saw, I'm going to move some of the pockets to the sleeves, and I made a cargo pocket for the sleeve. The other side is going to have a blood draw pin, which I actually already have. I found a Red Cross give blood pin, and that's going to be on the shoulder. Because we're like, what I'm making basically is like a medic's coat. It's gonna have a lot of red crosses and stuff on it. Now I have to reopen this to the page. There we go. Um, other things that are included in this drawing so far are the sleeves are going to be covered with ripped tights, basically. So the current trend of like taking hosiery, 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 pantyhose, I guess, whatever the fuck you wanna call them, and just jabbing them with an object to make them run. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do that on and sew them onto the sleeves. And then like the stuff on the sleeves is gonna go on top of that. This is my little pocket. I'm gonna put a flat piece in the bottom so it's got a little more structure. And then I've gotta seal the top edge because I forgot to have it. I've also, yes, I've already been burned by this project. <laughs> As I am with all my projects, I have hurt myself by accident during this one. Basically, what's next is sort of some of the more fun parts and some one of the tedious parts. The tedious part is sewing all of the closures on because that's just going to take like hours. I'm probably going to show you how to, I'm going to probably, in the voiceover and everything, show how I, <coughs> sorry, 
show how I did one, and then just do the rest so that, like, it's not boring to anybody. And then I'm going to show the decorating steps, which are going to be a lot more fun. I also, so I went to Joanne's. I went to Joanne's. I went to Joann's because Joann's is expensive, but it's also the only place where I can get this stuff around. They were having a deal on hand lotion. No, that's not what this is here. They were. It smells quite nice, but that's not what we're doing here. I got these ones. I got Q. I wanted to get Q Plus because I think that, yeah, Q Plus is an extra large. Don't fucking go by these sizes, by the way, because I wear these, and I know, like, I'm, like, some... I'm off sizes because my legs are weird, but I'm... I put on their large, and it was, like, a fucking small. Don't go by these sizes. I was trying to get an extra... extra large, but they didn't have it. And then they didn't have it in the color I wanted, which I wanted, like, this off gray. You'll see it out of the package. It's, like, a gray. So I got the large of that and the... Jet Black in Q Plus. So, in case. Also, why does it go A to B then Q to Q Plus? What the fuck does that. Sizing is stupid. I hate it. <laughs> so, that's what we're doing with these. But the other thing is, fucking got these because these were on sale. They are like grayed and sandblasted puppies. And what I was almost thinking is. From the bag that I did for my first video, I still have quite a length of cord in here. What I was thinking is either taking it and hanging it from the lapel on the shoulder, because I bought two of those, and putting the clippies on the ends, and then putting the D-ring somewhere so you could strap it across. I don't have that on there because that was a last minute edition when I was like, I really want to buy these for something. <laughs> so, got that, got everything, that's basically what we're doing now. Um, hopefully this doesn't corrupt, although I guess I can't be 100% sure with this fucking camera, because this camera's really old. It's a good camera, because it's by Sony, but it's still fucking old as hell. I think I found it in the basement. I don't actually remember where I got this camera. I know I didn't buy it, that's for sure. But, that's, that's what we're doing. Muscle about gum. <laughs> I have a problem with gum and monster. <laughs> so, I'm gonna move you to there point you down so you can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna eat dinner while I'm doing it because I work so I gotta fucking multitask if I ever want to do any DIY projects. Luckily I'm quitting my job because my job fucking sucks. As most jobs do, mine fucking sucks. So <clears throat> if you so please, please move to the designated area. Alright, and now that you're in the designated area, you can see me start to attach some things. Uh, the first thing that I'm attaching is the long epaulette piece and the first frog clip. I put this at quite a fast speed because if I didn't, this video would be like 50 hours long because it took me like four days to finish this whole project between work and working on this project like eight hours a day. <laughs> So I just attached the end triangle piece, not obviously the full piece, with a just random cord and hand stitching. I used the wrong cord here, so it kind of sucked to do this part, but I ended up doing it much better later. And this is just, you know, me hand stitching, being annoyed with the hand stitching. And yes, I, I talked about this already, but I did stab myself a couple times during this project. You will see band-aids begin to accumulate. <laughs> Uh, and after this, the next part is going to be me attaching the other frog clip, which you can see now. To do this, I uh, did a couple X's over the middle of it and then secured the back part by going uh, over and around it. And I'm out of frame a little bit, but sorry. Same thing happened with the closure to the frog clip, which you can see a little bit better. Update, I forgot all the boring hardware stuff. Oh no, we've got a clean base and we can start working on some of the more fun aspects of this jacket. So far, this is what we've got. It is a little, the jacket itself is a little small for me, so there's a bit of gapping, which you normally you actually don't see. I just happen to have like a red shirt on, so you can definitely see it. But so far, the top one is a bit 
crooked. But I think that gives it more character, honestly, and I'm too lazy to fix the damn thing. So this is what we've got so far. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is finish up this pocket and make the armband for the pocket. So I'm gonna measure my arm and make a band for it. So this is me measuring the band out. I ended up accidentally cutting too much fabric, which was good. I was really afraid I wasn't gonna cut enough fabric. And then we're cutting to me doing the army patch. Now I'll explain this a little bit more later, but I heard that there's some reason that you shouldn't put like a red cross like a full red cross on a costume and just because I couldn't find a lot of information on it I decided that I wasn't too upset about the idea of putting like a faker red cross on it so I did that instead uh, and right now <laughs> I'll be switching a lot between this but it's me making basically a textile fabric length for myself out of two different pantyhose so that it would fit comfortably and loose around my arm so this is me just sewing one end of it uh, this took forever because I did an, like, an L stitch, I guess. I don't really know what it's called. And then I would intersplice myself going back between when the patch dried to make the white more opaque. My bowl of chips, do not mind that. And then to make the sleeves, I just sort of cut it uh, and started, like, yanking at it. I ended up realizing later with the second one that it was better not to cut it but just to take the blunt end of the scissor and sort of stab it through it so that you would get more of like this sort of ripped and run look that was a little bit more of what I was going for. But as you could see I decided instead to just put a red border around of uh, the white patch instead of doing a full red patch and then I was showing you my watermelon there for a second. Don't know why I did that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so this is what the arm sleeve generally ended up looking like. It was, it's pretty much like my favorite part of the jacket now that I've worn it a couple of times, just because it, it makes the jacket really fucking comfy. <laughs> Here I'm just making a bottom for the cargo pocket by taking some Mod Podge and some of the original fabric and just covering a cardstock piece to make it less flimsy. Uh, and then putting it under the Mod Podge to dry. And now I'm putting a pocket topper on the cargo pocket so that uh, it looks a little more interesting because I did not make a big enough flap for the cargo pocket. Uh, so I'm just gonna do that off frame. God damn it. Um, it's so hard to do these projects in frame. If you know anything about DIYing and then also like filming your projects, you know that filming it takes makes it taste like four times longer. I've got like five other projects to do right now that I'm not gonna film because I specifically need them to be done in less than like two days each. But I'm just sewing that on and, and trying to make it look pretty, you know, make it look interesting. Uh, and I think we're almost done with this piece. Yeah. So the next thing I did was I attached this button, but you don't really need to see that. Hello and welcome to the last part of putting this thing together. It has been four long fucking days and I'm ready for this to be finished. Before I like actually start attaching everything, I'm gonna show you all of the cool shit that we're gonna be putting on this jacket today. So first, on the sleeves we have also cactus pajama pants. Do not mind my cactus pajama pants. We have this tatted up and ripped up tight fabric that I made, especially for this. It's gonna get turned inside out. I basically took two pairs of gray tights and I attached them into one so that it would be big enough to go around my arm. And then I just went like that and started ripping at it and tearing it. And we've got one of those for each arm. On top of it, on this side, I have a medic patch, a little cargo pocket with a red cross, but like a faker red cross, because I heard that there was something about not being, not like putting red crosses on things because it could confuse you in an emergency situation, but I made a medic cross bag 
for the arm. On the body, we've got suspender-like things made out of ripcord with little dusty gray hook pins that can either go cross-body or just hang down, so we'll have some D-rings attached by the hip there. And so those will go and attach under the little epaulette thingies. And on the other arm, aside from its own sleeve, I have this vintage uh, Give Blood Duchess County Red Cross thing, and I thought that would be really cool. Another thing that I might be doing later is I have a jumper bag, which is a, a legit paratrooper bag, and I have another thing that's really cool that's going to go on it. My friend Dan, who works with me, he used to be, um, he used to work for the military and just the army in general doing a bunch of different shit, and he has this pin that is from the 60s that was given to him. And it is a uh, American Legion from Buffalo, New York pin. And it's from the 60s. And he said that he should, I should put it on either my jacket or I should put it on the bag. And I can't decide if I want to put it like that on the jacket or if I want to go put it on the bag. So that might end up on the jacket. So, now. Let's get to attaching all this shit. Okay. Now would be the time to start fast forwarding things. You got it me, so let's start fast forwarding these things. Um, the first thing I did, like I said, is I started attaching the sleeve. Um, this part took quite a long time, and even though I sped it up, it's still about a minute and a half uh, long, so if you want to skip to it, uh, skip about a minute and 40 seconds from now. Uh, warning though, when you get a minute and 40 seconds in from here, there my hands like are quite white and the way that I cut it makes it kind of look like it's flashing. And so it might be a flash warning. So flash warning for a minute and 40 from now because I, I guess that, that would probably be an issue. But I can't re-edit it because it would take too long. And it's already like three weeks past when I want to have this video up. But basically what I decided to do for this was uh, do a very thin stitch with a very thin needle and thin white thread uh, that sort of makes it look like it was stitched in with the original fabric on the original seam. And so I started doing that all the way around. It took quite a while. However, this part is now my favorite part of the jacket. The sleeve looks really good and the two of them <laughs> look incredible. It makes it look way more dilapidated and I absolutely love that. Again, we're coming up on that flash warning in just a couple more seconds, so be careful with that. Um, and yeah, this is how the end of sleeve ended up looking. And the next part is me sort of putting on all of the accessories in a very fast style just to you know, get the rest of it done. And uh, I put on the cargo sleeve next and then undid all of uh, the buttons to measure the cargo sleeve and pin it up, featuring my dinosaur buddy over there helping me with good luck. And this ended up being where I found out that I had too much fabric around the side and I decided I was going to, um, after I sewed it and found that out, I decided I was going to actually cut that and sew the ends themselves. Uh, with just a quick, like, general whip stitch, just so that it didn't fray, and it actually fit the sleeve itself. Uh, once that was done, the next thing I put on was the button, and then I attached the lapels just underneath uh, the covers for the buttons, and once that was done, uh, I put the covers back over the buttons so you could not see the seam, so again, it just looked like it blended in with the jacket. I'm learning, guys. I'm starting to make more intricate things. Uh, after that was done, I did the other side, which also didn't take that long, so I just left it in. And I put the cover back over on that one as well, once you will see that in a second. <laughs> uh, and after this, there was nothing else to do, except to, you know, fasten all the buttons again, and then, you know, put it on. And this. 
this is the end result. We've got the gross, tattered, war-torn ghost sleeves. Medic's patch. These could be a little straighter, but honestly, gives a fucking character. Dangly bits, of course. And we've got the medic's pouch. The closures. This is literally how I wanted it to come out. So you're probably wondering, Jimmy, the front, so fab. What are you going to do with the back? Because you are a back panel person. You love giant back panels. I'm thinking that inside of the seams here, that this, that triangle piece on the back, I'm thinking I'm just going to fill it with band clippings, like band, t like taking band t-shirts apart and putting it in the back. And I think that ones up looking very good, so that's probably what I'm going to do. Let me just whip the jumper bag this. Yes! This is giving me Ghost of You vibes. Mailman for the military. <laughs> but it's also just giving me soldier militia punk vibes. And I, it's like my favorite vibes. I'm still debating whether or not to put the badge pendant like here or to put or just to wait and fill up the sleeve with pins that are like this and put that one on my bag. We may never know. But, thank you for watching me put together this Militia Punk. Um, and I'm very excited with how this turned out and the sleeves and I love it and the hat fits with it so perfectly. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.